Hello, good morning. You welcome to the NCA Tower here in Accra. My name is Kwame Jan, and I welcome to the launch of the trial phase of the digital audio broadcasting service here in Ghana. next to the minister is the director general of the NCA, Mr. Joa Noche. Welcome, DG. Seated next to the left of Mr. Joa Noche is the project director for World DAB, Madam Benny O'Neill. You're welcome. Seated to the minister is the board chair of the, NDC, uh, of the NCA board, um, Mr. Isaac Emil Osebosa Jr. Welcome, sir. Seated behind uh, the board chair is the uh, director at the Ministry of uh, Chief Director at the Ministry of Communications, Mr. Alexander Afo. You're welcome, sir. We've also been joined by some board members of the NCA, um, and on the front row here, um, Dr. Usu, Mr. Banaman, and uh, Dr. Ose Usu as well. We welcome again to the program. Also here are directors and staff of the NCA, uh, of the NCA as well as from the media. As I mentioned before, we are very excited about DAB and what it has to offer for Ghana here. And before we get into the details of all of that, I'll kindly call upon a DG to come and give us a welcome remarks. John. The Minister for Communications and Digitalization, a member of Parliament for Ablekuma West Constituency, Honorable Esla Owusu Ekufu. The Chairman of the NCA Board, Mr. Isaac Emel Osei Bunsu, Jr. Members of the NCA Board here in present, the Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission, Mr. George Sapon, the project director of the World DAB Forum, Madame Benny O'Neill. The chief director of the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization, representing the National Security Coordinator, Kendall Tim Ta Bana. Mr. Atua for managing director of the Graphic Corporation Group Limited, representatives from the National Signal Brewery and representatives from SIGA, heads of sister agencies and of Ministry of Communications and Digitalization, management and staff of the NCA, our friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the National Communications Authority. We are grateful to you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to honor this invitation. I see a, a number of familiar faces here. Over the past few months, and indeed a few years now, a number of you have been here to help us commission one initiative or the other, or simply to update you on our work. We are happy to see you again. We do not take your presence for granted at all. In 2017, when I assumed the appointment of the Director General for NCA, the first challenge I was confronted with was the scarcity of frequency for FM radio broadcasting services. We receive tens of applications every week. However, the engineering team said 
there were no available frequencies to be assigned in the high demand markets of Accra, Kumasi, Takrade, and their environs. In most of our major cities, the table of available frequencies read zero. So how were we going to address this incessant demand for FM frequency authorization in the face of severe frequency constraints? The answer was technology. It's always said that technology drives innovations, and innovation drives market share. At the time, the NCA used a second adjacent channel rule to assign frequencies. By this rule, the frequencies immediately adjacent to an assigned frequency were left vacant to manage the interference, and only the second adjacent frequency was assigned in the same area. By leveraging technology, we embark on a study to identify the conditions under which we can assign the first adjacent without interference to existing stations. We established trial stations on adjacent frequencies to test some of the conditions the existing literature indicated will allow for compatibility. We played with transmission system parameters, transmitter locations, and, look, and took measures with our spectrum monitoring equipment, as well as different radio receivers. After several months of testing, technology and innovation proved to be the solution indeed. We were able to assign first adjacent channel frequencies if certain conditions could be met. And accordingly, we were able to grant new authorizations in all major cities. However, frequency is a finite resource. For FM radio, we only have 87.5 to 108 megahertz to work with. Hence, despite all the efforts we have made to satisfy the incessant demand for FM authorization, we currently have nothing to assign in some of the major cities. So how do we move forward? Honorable Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the answer is the same as was before. We need to leverage on technology. This time, digital technology. This is why we have all gathered here this morning to launch the trial of digital audio broadcasting, DAB. DAB is a digital radio standard for broadcasting digital audio radio services in many countries and around the world. The launch today positions Ghana as the first country in West Africa and the fourth in Africa to deploy DAB. I was hoping I could get applause here. <laughs> DAB provides good quality audio, supports the provision of value added services and spectrum efficiency. For example, in this trial, up to 18 existing FM stations in Accra and Kumasi will share one frequency channel out of the VHF band three, which is 174 to 230 megahertz, and a transmitter in Kumasi and Accra. With the concerns raised about restrictions on authorized coverage area for FM stations, we will be testing the possibility of extending coverage with DAB. Accordingly, in this trial, Stations in Accra will extend their coverage to Kumasi and vice versa. Additionally, because the frequency used in DAB is different from the one used for FM, both services will run simultaneously. That is simulcast. The brochures you have been given 
have more information on DAB. And after today, you can visit the NCA website to read more. To receive DAB broadcast, you need a radio or receiver that is DAB plus compliant. For the purpose of this trial, the authority will be giving out a few of such devices to the public, but they will not be enough for the millions of listeners in Accra and Kumasi. In light of this, Honorable Minister, last Thursday, we engaged household electronic dealers, car dealers, and representatives of the electronic manufacturers on DAB Plus receiver standards so they can begin to introduce quality DAB Plus receivers in the Ghanaian market. It is evident that we need all of you stakeholders on board for this trial to be successful. That is why we are launching it in public today. We need all broadcasting stations to promote DAB Plus service. The NCA is doing its bit on behalf of government, and we need all of you to contribute your part for a successful trial of DAB service. If you are lucky today, you may win a raffle, and you will have the opportunity to take one of the DAB Plus receivers home. We are hopeful that after a successful trial, the, first, the service will be deployed nationwide. Distinguished guest, the government of Ghana, under the leadership of His Excellency, the President, Nanado Danko Ekufuado, has pursued digital transformation agenda aimed at expanding digital access adoption, enhancing digital public service delivery, and promoting digitally enabled innovation. The introduction of digital sound broadcasting is consistent with the government's vision for digital acceleration and transformation. We are profoundly grateful to our sector minister, Honorable Osla Ousu Ekufu, for her continued support, especially the direct support we have received on this project. <laughs> Distinguished guests, I'm happy to announce that the board of directors of the NCA approved the DAB trial with enthusiasm and has reviewed reports on its progress at each board meeting this year. This project should properly be one of the legacy of this board under the chairmanship of Mr. Isaac Emel Osebunsu, Jr. <laughs> we are thankful to the project director of DAB Forum, Madam Benny O'Neill, who flew in from London to grace the lunch today. Your presence means a lot to us, presence here. Finally, we are grateful to our technical partners for the implementation of DAB Plus infrastructure. KNET Limited, an indigenous Ghanaian company delivering world-class solutions, as well as the 18 existing FM stations involved in the trial. You have been a great team so far. <laughs> to all our stakeholders, thank you for your comments and encouragement which put us on our feet. Our friends from the media, thank you for never getting tired of us. Once again, I welcome you all to the NCA. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Joanochi, for the welcome remarks. And just to, um, I know you all have the brochure, but we're also live on uh, Unique FM, by the way. So let me just mention that. So the 18 stations that are involved in this trial, from Accra, we have Unique FM, Asempai FM, City FM, Hot FM, Peace FM, Star FM, Asasi FM, Atlantis Radio, Class FM, Oman FM, and Radio Universe. And then from Kumasi, we have Angel FM, Kesben FM, Opimso FM, Sompa FM, Radio Focus, Orange FM, and Wound to Me FM. Now, we will now take some remarks from the project director from World DAB, Madam Benny O'Neill. Madam. 
Honorable Minister of Communications and Digitalization, Deputy Minister, Chairman of NCA, Director General of NCA, Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. I am truly thrilled to be here. When I arrived, I'm staying in a hotel just next door. I took out my portable DAB radio that I travel with, and I excitedly scanned to see what I could find on air on DAB+. And I was delighted to find 18 DAB Plus stations live on air here today in Accra. And I know that there are parallel services on air in Kumasi. So congratulations to all of you. And congratulations on being the first country in West Africa to deploy DAB Plus. So we all love radio. We listen to it every day. It gives us companionship. It gives us news, local culture. It's free to air. There's no gatekeeper between the broadcaster and the listener. It's universally available and it's reliable. So it's important. Radio is important for the listeners. It's important for broadcasters. And it's important for civil society. But the market is changing. New digital services are on air or available elsewhere, YouTube, TikTok, Spotify, etc. Consumer preferences are changing. We all have smartphones or tablets or lots of other ways to consume audio. So the competition for radio is being transformed. And crucially, FM spectrum is full. And we heard that from Mr. Anoche. And that leaves it impossible for broadcasters to innovate so it's essential to have a strategy for broadcast radio. So DAB Plus is the digital backbone for broadcast radio. It's digital terrestrial radio. And as Mr. Anachi mentioned, it's on band three. You can have 18 services on one single frequency. But DAB Plus is not just about the audio either. You can have the visual components. You can broadcast images like album artwork, station logos, now playing information, etc. So all of this makes the radio experience more compelling for the listener. So where, where is DAB employed elsewhere around the world? Well, in Europe, DAB is the core digital platform for radio. It's well established in several markets, UK, Denmark, Germany, Italy, France, and others are on the move. And in fact, the first countries in Europe are switching off FM. Norway switched off in 2017, and Switzerland's going to switch off next year. And it's not just about Europe. Australia launched DAB Plus in 2009, and there are trials and activity in the Asia-Pacific region and also in the Middle East. Um, services are on air in Kuwait. And just two weeks ago, Saudi Arabia launched DAB+. However, where we see most increased interest in DAB+, I'd say in about the last year, year and a half, is from Africa. So in addition to today's launch, here in Ghana. There are trials also in Algeria and South Africa, and regular services are on air in Tunisia. So we've received recently about a dozen inquiries from other countries across the African continent. So I think Ghana is very much leading the way, and hopefully others will follow. So as you launch DAB Plus here today, it is important to think about receivers. As of today, there's around 110 million DAB receivers that have been sold. The devices are now mass market. There are multiple brands manufacturing the receivers. And at least in Europe, the prices are starting at around 20 US dollars. I think that's around 220 SETI. But the prices are coming down. A 
crucial development took place in Europe in 2019. There was a piece of European regulation passed which mandated DAB, or sorry, not DAB, digital terrestrial radio in, in cars. Where there's already a radio, it has to be also digital terrestrial. And that's been a game changer. What we see now is 96% of new cars sold in Europe have DAB as standard. And this will have a ripple effect beyond Europe. We see that already. So what does that all mean for Ghana? Well, it means that it's never been easier th th than today, than now, for new markets to launch on DAB+. There's a wide range of receivers available, prices are coming down, and there's an installed base of receivers in cars. But what are the reasons for deploying DAB+, apart from this FM congestion? Well, there are benefits for listeners and benefits for broadcasters. For listeners, a big benefit is that increased in cho increase in choice. What we see in other markets is that nowadays there are about six times as many national DAB stations on air as there were on analog. And that's allowing for uh, stations on different languages, different cultures, etc. Also, clearer sound, digital sound, and that's the case especially where FM is crowded. So for broadcasters, what about the benefits for broadcasters? Well, as I said, it gives the opportunity to innovate, to grow audiences and revenue. An example from the UK is a radio station called Absolute, a very strong, core, established radio brand. They took the opportunity with the launch of a national commercial DAB multiplex to extend their brand. And they launched a series of what they call decades stations. So absolute 70s, absolute 80s, absolute 90s. They were catering for different demographics. And as a result, they increased their audience by about a third. So, and, and of course, where there's an increase in an audience, there's increased revenues. And what we see in the UK is that UK commercial radio revenues have gone up by 38% in the last 10 years. Now that's in a context where there's been an explosion of online advertising. So we think that that's really a testament to those strong core brands, and it's a testament of the loyalty of the listeners and the reaction of the listeners. So I've talked about the benefits for, for the listeners and the broadcasters, but what we're seeing more recently is that there's three macro reasons for DAB+, and they're economics, environment, and emergency warning. Looking just very quickly at those three elements, firstly, economics. The distribution cost for a single service on DAB is 80% lower than on FM. It's because of the multiple services on a single multiplex, it means that the costs of distribution are shared. And the economics is improving even further, thanks to a kind of more recent innovative approach, that so-called small-scale DAB, that's what it's called in the UK. And this is an approach based on open source software. And what it means is that it allows smaller broadcasters like local community or campus radio to coexist alongside those larger regional or national brands. And what we think is that this is allowing new countries to take their first steps on DAB, and it also offers others a low-cost way to enter the market. So looking now at environment, DAB is the green solution it consumes significantly less energy than FM. In fact, the energy requirements for DAB are lower than on any other platform. And there's been numerous studies on that. Uh, one that I can quote is there's a BBC study done in 2020, and they looked at the energy footprint of BBC radio services, and they found that DAB is 33% 
more efficient than FM and more efficient than IP delivery. And finally, for emergencies, DAB is resilient. Broadcast radio is reliable. Mobile networks are less robust, particularly in times of emergency, and especially when out of the home, when other networks fail. Germany, in more recent times, just a few months back, they're, they're, the stakeholders across the industry there, they're proposing that DAB Plus be embedded as part of the national emergency warning infrastructure. And it's been referred now to World DAB, the technical committee within World DAB, to establish an Etsy specification so that that approach is available to other countries as well. So what we're seeing is that those three aspects are becoming more and more important for stakeholders. So what advice could I bring to you today from those other markets? Well, we have this framework that we refer to, and it's the five Cs. So I'll run through them really quickly. First of all, coverage. Focus first on the cities, the towns, the larger population centers, and then expand across the highways and into the regions. Offer compelling content to the listener, something different that they can't get on FM, something that will encourage them to make the switch. Consumer devices, work with leading manufacturers and retailers to ensure that the devices are available to consumers, and I know you've already started that. Cars, I've mentioned that EU regulation, DAB in cars is growing steadily, and I know that there's a, a, a car assembly industry here, so I, I think there's definitely signs of hope there. And finally, communication. It's important to do sustained promotion of DAB on FM and on other media. It needs to be sustained and continued. And then underpinning those five Cs is actually another one, and that one is, you can probably guess, Collaboration. It is essential for all the stakeholders to collaborate. You're all in this room here today. And what we see in other countries is that oftentimes they'll establish a, a, a body, a small working group that oversees the process and helps coordinate all the stakeholders to help ensure success. So finally, I'd like to extend an invitation to all of you to connect and join with World DAB. World DAB is the global industry forum for DAB. We're a membership body. We've got around 115 members from around 33 countries all across the world. And our members represent the whole ecosystem. So they're kind of like who everybody is in this room today on the international level. And we exist like kind of brokerage service for knowledge, expertise, information, on how to deploy DAB+. And we do that through committees, working groups, tailored workshops. So we'd love you to be part of it. So in conclusion, radio needs a strategy for the digital age. DAB provides solutions for listeners, broadcasters, and society. So now is the perfect time for Ghana to commit. We welcome Ghana on this journey. World DAB is here. We're ready to support you. We want to help you. And we're looking forward to working with you as you begin your journey to digitize broadcast radio and secure a strong future for Ghana's vibrant radio industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Benny O'Neill, Project Director for World DAB. Now, may I introduce some other guests who have joined us in the course of this program. We've been joined by the Deputy Minister for Communications, Honorable Abinapoma, you're welcome. So, been joined by the Information Minister, Honorable Kujon Pongkrama, you're welcome. We've also been joined by representatives from SIGA, from GEPA, from the AAG, and from other bodies that we've, we've invited to be here today. You're welcome to today's program. Now, we have some comments from the Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission, Dr. George Sapon.
Thank you very much, Kwame. I quickly want to disclaim that uh, I'm a refugee from academia and never <laughs> did a PhD, so let's put that on record. Honorable Ministers, Board Chair, DG, and all our colleagues, board members. I think that I, li I tend to like to reduce things to my level. So from what DG and De Benny have told us about the wonderful technology, I tend to want to reduce it to my street level. So the, what we are talking about is that if you thought of DAB or broadcasting generally, as I always do, as say uh, travel, transport, and thought of it like traffic. We are saying that the city is choked. There are no pathways for creating new streets. So what the team have done is to create roads, skyways, and flyovers for us now to ride to avoid the congestion that we are struggling with. So if you conceived of, that, of it like that, you would understand the extreme engineering and the extreme contribution that this uh, DAB introduction is making to us. And that is why I think that the minister and the team, the board, Joe, and the management and staff deserve a huge <laughs> congratulations uh, for this. Honorable Minister for Communications, I have said this many times, but once you are here, I want to put it on record again, that I had the privilege to be associated with NCA, and uh, I knew that we did our best, but every time I have come to NCA, I have seen the exponential growth in almost everything that is going on. And I want to congratulate you for the team that you put together and the work they have done. You did something great for this nation. In the post-truth period where everything is challenged, it is important that the great things that happen, even when we know, we say them that directly. So congratulations. I have just two more comments to make. The next one is that we've heard a bit about the technology. But I also want to draw our attention that this is also a democratization of access to the means of public communications. In the sense that the opportunities that this offers is now creating more opportunities for underserved communities, for unserved communities, and for almost everyone to have additional access to radio and broadcasting. And so we really need to celebrate this moment as a major contribution to our national effort. I think that going forward, there are a few issues of policy that we will find time also to reflect that I think we would want to throw out to our colleagues, especially in industry. Some of the things that all of us need to begin to reflect on and possibly if we're inclined to make submissions to NC and all of us is, for example, DG just spoke about the rich as against uh, the limitations that were placed on the FM rich. And let us understand that the FM rich itself, in my view, was the first step towards the democratization of access because by cutting the, the rich and the range, we're creating more opportunities for more people to have access. But if in DAB, the rich is further than FM. Does that create a symmetry of rich as against FM broadcasters and those in DAB? What would be the implications? Uh, are we going to grant access to uh, existing frequency holders in terms of uh, taking DAB licenses or whether we are going to uh, create new opportunities for new people? 
What does that mean for concentration? We know, for example, that Giba some time ago raised concerns of, that they thought about saturation of the market, even though we are here to see, I have said that we've not seen the economics of it. What number is ideal, what number is, we still need to find opportunity to uh, discuss some of these issues. But for now, I think that it's time to celebrate a major Ghanaian achievement in the field of innovation, leadership foresight, and national pride. And that is why I want to invite all of you once again to congratulate NC and the ministry for this great feat. Thank you very much. George Sapon, always a teacher. Thank you so much, George Sapon, for this, for the brief remarks. Now I will call on the Honorable Minister for Communication, for information, I beg your pardon, Honorable Kojo Ponkroma, to give us his remarks. Honorable Minister, Honorable Deputy Minister, Board Chair, uh, Chief Executives, Representatives of the National Media Commission, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Um, first, I want to thank the uh, Ministry of Communications and the National Communication Authority for um, <laughs> inviting us. The minister always reminds me that the, min uh, you know, the name of the ministry is now amended. Uh, the Ministry for Communications and Digitalization. So we thank you for the invitation extended to us because we are partners in this sphere where on the technology side, um, the ministry and the agency handle the technology framework and then on the content side, we work with uh, some of the other uh, media stakeholder groups like the National Media Commission, the Ghana Journalist Association, PrimPAG, Giba, etc., and I see reps of those various institutions uh, who are here. So we are happy that this partnership continues. There are just four quick comments I want to make. For us, one of the most exciting things about this development is the economic benefit that it provides the industry. Uh, this industry, uh, for those who are very familiar with it, um, leaves a lot of investors uh, with losses because the cost of operations is pretty high. The uh, market space is saturated in some sectors of the market, and therefore your ability to crowd in revenue to pay for your cost is um, limited. But with new technology uh, always popping up, it helps to reduce the cost of operation. And therefore, if you get the business model right, then you can extend your uh, commercial punch rake in more revenue, reduce your cost, and then become a proper business where you are uh, earning some profits at the end of the day. And so for us, it's very exciting as um, a, a technology platform that will help to improve the economics of the industry. The second point that I'd like to make is that hopefully, 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 it will lead to the production of a lot more content that builds our society and moves us forward. Um, if you look at the payoff line of the National Communication Authority, they say communications for development. Communication is supposed to be used as a tool that helps us move forward, that helps us to showcase our best, to sell our opportunities, to attract partnerships. But more often than not, I think we all bear testimony to the fact that when we get new media, we don't necessarily put our best on it. If you look at the social media uh, expansion, and the democratization of publishing channels as a result of social media. And you compare it to the kind of content that we are collectively putting out. Uh, I think as part of the issues that the NMC raises for our consideration, we should ask ourselves whether we are using it to push our best, we are using it to uh, build our society, or we are using it uh, for obtuse purposes. So hopefully this as a new technology platform should help the promotion of a lot more content that helps to uh, develop us. Entrepreneurship is something that we want to see a lot more promotion of. Of course, that's how you, win, you know, excite people to create businesses and jobs. Um, tourism, arts and entertainment, fintech, etc. So content that essentially hopefully moves us forward is what we are hoping that this new platform will be used for. Number three, I can't resist the temptation 
to um, take advantage of your platform to mention that there's a lot of work that has been going on in terms of collaboration between the National Media Commission and the National Communication Authority uh, on the matter of dealing with what they call egregious media content. And I think from the 1st of September, uh, the much expected collaboration that uh, enables the two, uh, may I say, regulators to use the uh, monitoring systems that have been put in place and to help us deal with egregious media content from the 1st of September uh, will be starting. And it's exciting to see that that collaboration is continuing. So um, Joe and your team at the NCA and then the team at the NMC, I'd like to congratulate you on that one. Very finally, we look forward to a successful pilot. We also look forward to the fact that you build a strong regulatory framework for this new technology um, window that is being opened up and then a full rollout where uh, those who are interested in tapping into this new technology uh, can uh, tap into it and benefit from all of the other uh, good sides uh, to it. Uh, I'm happy to see about 18 stations uh, on the pilot. It doesn't mean they are permanently on the platform. Am I correct? They are here for a temporary period on the pilot. And then after that, those who want to get onto it permanently uh, can get. And I was excited to see that the number one station uh, for this pilot uh, was unique 95.7 uh, FM of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. So I was very excited uh, to know that as well. So uh, thank you for the invitation and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Honorable Kojopo Nkrumah Minister for Information. Now we'll have the keynotes addressed by the Honorable Minister for Communications and Digitalization. Uh, Honorable Mrs. Esla Usiokufu. The Minister for Information and Member of Parliament for Ofwasi AGDB, Honorable Kwejo Opon Kroma. I have an issue with people calling you Kojo. You are <laughs> I've seen the chairperson of the Communications Committee in Parliament here, Honorable Cynthia Mamley Morrison, Chairman and members of the NCA Board, Director General Management and Staff of the NCA, Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission, the Project Director of World DAB, Chief Director of the Ministry of Communications, Heads of Organizations, Institutions, and other invited personalities, the media, ladies and gentlemen. Throughout the years, Ghana's unwavering commitment to embracing digital innovation has propelled us to the forefront of digital transformation on the continent. And our government, through its Digital Ghana Agenda, launched in 2017, has instituted projects and programs geared towards bridging the digital divide and ensuring digital inclusion for all sectors of the economy. We in the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization have been focused on crafting and shaping policies that not only facilitate the creation of information and communications technological infrastructure, but also drive the development of services that foster economic competitiveness. We continue to implement innovative digital infrastructural and skills development projects, such as the Rural Telephony and Digital Inclusion Project, and I can't resist it, the Girls in ICT Initiative, to make ICT accessible to all Ghanaians and demystify it, encouraging and empowering young girls and women to pursue careers in the ICT sector. We're building the foundations of our digital economy and working steadily to transform our economy through technology. We're committed to empowering all agencies under the ministry to adapt to the ever-evolving technological landscape by adopting innovative strategies and approaches to their work. And I'm proud of their continuing efforts to deliver innovative and cutting edge solutions. The NCA 
is today launching the trial of yet another service, digital audio broadcasting. In addition to its groundbreaking media or broadcasting monitoring lab, the common platform, the computer emergency response team, among many other innovations introduced in the past six years. These have all been focused on meeting the needs of the industry and ultimately benefiting the consumer. With a rapid development of radio and TV industry and its convergence with telecommunications, it has become necessary to ensure the quality of broadcasting services do not deteriorate. Statistics indicate that as at the end of 2022, the NCA had authorized 707 FM stations, out of which 513 are in operation, a very congested field. Clearly, this proves that radio broadcasting still reigns supreme over all other forms of mass media communications, as it remains a pivotal source of information and entertainment for both urban and rural communities. In terms of value, according to the Digital Journal, the global digital radio broadcasting market was valued at 3.7 plus billion US dollars in 2021, and is expected to expand at a growth rate of 11%, reaching $6.9 billion by 2027. This provides an opportunity for Ghana to tap into this revenue stream to expand revenues for both the government and the private sector. As we stride into the future, the advent of DAB marks a significant milestone in radio broadcasting. With its ability to harness digital signals, DAB ushers in a new era of enhanced sound quality, an expanded array of choice, interactive features that redefine listener experience, amongst others, as we've already been told. This technology transcends the limitation of traditional analog FM radio, promising a transformational and captivating auditory journey for all listeners. What is interesting about DAB is the fact that it addresses the frequency constraints by expanding coverage, as well as promoting efficient spectrum utilization. As we launched a trial in Accra and Kumasi, I recommend that you try it if you happen to find yourselves in the aforementioned towns. So we have to get the devices. I congratulate the team at NCA and their service provider for putting in the work and ensuring that Ghana continues to blaze the trail in the telecommunications sector for our peers to emulate. Indeed, we are the gateway to Africa and the Black Star. So we're blazing the path for all others to follow. I encourage the NCA to work speedily in the rollout of the interventions, as this is a fast-changing industry. And the NCA needs to be agile to respond quickly to the changing needs of the sector and the tastes of the consumer. Some issues have already been raised, and I believe that that's why we're having this trial phase to iron out the regulatory issues and all other challenges that we may encounter. So I urge us all to participate in this experience and share our feedback with the NCA. I also commend the 18 FM stations for availing their stations for this trial. And though many more would have liked to be part of this pilot, you were carefully sele selected based on your diversity of programming content and audience reach. I'm told that Ghana is introducing the latest version of DAB, known as DAB+. And this progressive step places us at the forefront of innovation. And we're the first nation in West Africa and the fourth on the entire continent to deploy DAB+. No mean achievement. But it also underscores our commitment to not only staying abreast of technological advancements, but leading the charge in shaping the digital broadcasting future of the continent. Together, we shall continue to innovate, elevate our digital landscape, foster growth, empowerment, and prosperity for all, and provide boundless opportunities for our young people. It is indeed digital time in Ghana. 
and I'm delighted to declare the first ever trial of digital audio broadcasting in West Africa duly launched. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for your keynote remarks. So now, what does this really mean? Um, we are here in Accra at the NCA Tower Airport City. Um, can we, is this a fluke or is it for real? Let's go to um, Kesben FM. Justice, can you uh, tune to Kesben uh, FM uh, so we hear them? Angel, Ewo Kumasi, Asasi, Kumasi, Asempa, Accra. Atlantis Accra, City FM Accra. So this is the Class morning FM show on Kesben FM, Hot in FM Kumasi. Accra. Kesben FM Kumasi, Oman FM Accra, Opimso Radio Kumasi, uh, Orange Kumasi, Peace Accra, Radio Focus Enzo Kumasi, uh, Radio Universe Ewa Accra, Sumpa FM Ewa Kumasi, Star FM Accra, and they want to me. FM and so a world Kumasi. Next, I say 18 stations in Amudo Mo Eshas. Oh, okay. So, 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 we have uh, uh, a so uh, Kumasi uh, Regional Manager, Diana Usuansa, live on the radio in the Kesben FM studios in Kumasi. And we can hear her live uh, here in Accra. Um, Justice, let's try um, and listen to Focus, uh, Focus FM from KNUSC in Kumasi. Okay. So let's try to hear Focus. This, this focus. Focus is in Kumasi, is uh, the Kumasi version of uh, Radio Universe. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So um, let's move to Radio Universe now. And I'm biased to watch Universe because I used to work there. Radio Universe, please. Uh, Radio Universe, so now I'm going to go to the Now, I'm going to go to the uh, your friend is a NCA launch digital audio broadcasting. Okay, I do be as you see my catch or my pay more catch or say, your friend is a digital audio broadcasting, a digital platform. One NCA for a dear bar, a bebois, a ma, your radio transformation. I come her, your friend is saying, I say a tumpon, not your queer name. I cry and Kumase, yes, I cry and Kumase. Okay, so oh, yeah. That, that should not prove. Let's go back to Kes Ben and Kojo. I think we can have the Facebook feed of uh, Kes Ben to show our guest here. So let's pick the uh, Facebook feed where Diana is in the studio in um, Kumasi with Kes Ben FM and then hear her on the radio as well. So can we have uh, the feed from Kes Ben's Facebook page? Kumasi. Slide. Okay. Okay. We are FM. Okay. 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 Let us all put our device here. Our number be a. Yeah, the way Abba. Okay. Way say a sign a amount of flashlight. Okay. A sign say a solar charge. Uh -huh. Okay, enough of that. We are not selling that. We are giving us to see rest now. Thank you very much. So now we have something coming up now. We have some devices that we want to give out for free. When you came in the building, you asked to drop your call cards. Can I have some help, please? Um, Messi, please come. It's me here. We ask you to kindly drop your call cards in the bowl here. And the idea is that we, we have some devices to give out for free here at this launch. So I'll, I'll start off by calling on the board chair of the NCA, uh, Mr. Isaac Emilio Sebon, so kindly do, do us the honors. Pick the first five call cards for us, please. <laughs> kindly pick the, uh, the first five call cards from the first bowl. Um, if, if he pick his own card, I'll declare it as invalid. So f uh, f uh, five of the cards, please, any of them. Oboe Edusu. Obo, please come. From CCFM. 
The next one, please. The next one, uh, um, uh, Bonche, please. Ogu, please come. We also have uh, Kojo Amwako Nzole from Orange FM. Please come forward as well. Let's have the next one. Next one is uh, George Ofori, uh, head of IT at, at SIGA. George Ofori, please come forward as well. Two more from the board chair. This is from Nicholas K. Juma from OMY TV. Please come forward. The last one. Thank you, board chair. The last one is for Jacob Dabra. Jacob Dabra. Thank you. Thank you, please. So, um, Ogo, please come forward. Now, the second bowl, kindly pick a, a card to determine the size of the receiver you get. What does he say? Portable DAB. Portable DAB. Mercy, please, was the honest. Thank you very much, Ogo. Thank you. Yes, um, Jacob Dabra, kindly pick from the second bowl. And let's see what um, receiver you get. What, what does he say? Portable DB uh, radio. There you go. Thank you. Nicholas? Also pick. What do you have? Portable. Wow. Okay. There you go. George? Same drill. Portable as well. And then could you please? Could you please pick something else? Yes, pick something else. <laughs> what do you have there? Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, Messi, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm using my powers as MC to change that for you. Get a desktop one. Thank you. All right. So I'll now call on uh, uh, Mr. Twaffle, please do as an honest. Please come forward. Pick the next five. For us, again, if you pick your own card, you're disqualified. <laughs> and for some reason, I can see his own card right there. <laughs> okay, the next one, please. Daniel Kwame Dankwa, please come forward. Daniel Kwame Dankwa from Hot FM, please come forward. And this is from uh, Jennifer Enyonam, please come forward as well. Jennifer Enyonam, please come forward. Three more, actually three more. All right, this is uh, Kennel Tim Batabana. <laughs> Two more, please. <laughs> yeah, that's the pass of it. Thank you very much. And this is for Nso Paul Mensa. Nso Paul Mensa from African News. Okay, so now um, let's start from um, uh, Kennel. Please pick from the second bowl. Can you guys please excuse uh, the guests a bit, please? Thank you. Desktop. Please give the candle a desktop. Paul. Paul. Where's Paul? Kindly pick as well. What do you have? Please open it for us quickly. Portable. Thank you, Paul. Daniel. Same drill. What do you have? Desktop. Jennifer, please pick yours. Also, thank you very much. Please have your seat. Honorable Deputy Minister, please was the honest. Desktop for you, uh, Jennifer. So the Honorable Deputy Minister will pick the next five um, um, call cards for us from here. The first bowl. William Sapon from Daily Democrats. William Sapon, please come forward. Next, Nanaya Faha from Protoa. Please come forward. Um, Emmanuel Saki. Mavis Ajua Sasu. And the last one is Evans uh, uh, Mawuli from City TV. All right, so the same drill. Uh, Mavis, are you here already? Okay, Evans. Please pick, pick from the second bowl. What do you have? Quickly. Desktop. All right, great. Mavis. 
What do you get? Portable. Portable. Thank you. Emmanuel? What do you get? Desktop. Desktop. Thank you. Nayao? What do you get? Desktop. Desktop. Thank you. William? Benny? Please do us the honors for the next batch of uh, five cards. What did he get? Desktop, thank you very much. All right, so Benny, the next five. All right, this is for um, Gloria Giba. You gave me two, Benny. So um, let's say two lucky people. So one second. Um, AJ Akins from Pink FM. AJ Akins from Pink FM, thank you. Please come. Then we have um, Alex Shermatsin Boche. Please come, thank you. Um, and then we have um, Kojo Preko Dankwa. And the last one, thank you very much. Benny, please have your seat, thank you. The last one is um, Lor Lor Lorraine Skanga from Putua. Lorraine Skanga from Putua, thank you very much. So we we'll start off with um, Geba, uh, Gloria from Geba. What do you have? Portable. Please, thank you. Loris Kanga from Protoa. Loris Kanga, pick your second. Let's see what you get. Portable, thank you. Alex, kindly pick. Akins, desktop, thank you. Akins. Could you? Desktop. Desktop. Could you please pick yours as well? <laughs> oh, there are, there are two extras. Okay, there are two extras. Um, let, me, let me pick those two. Portable, Portable okay. Are we, are, are we done? There's one left. Okay. The last one we'll give it to... Um, uh, okay. Kwesi Owusu Abrokwa. From Ghana Post. Desktop for you. Oh, but because I switched it earlier, you get a portable one. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's all, it's all radio. It's all radio. Thank you very much. All right. We are almost at the end of uh, today's program. But let me mention that um, the Minister for Information mentioned the Broadcast Monitoring Center on the ground floor here at the NCA building. Just in case you, you have not been been there before, please let us know. We'll organize a quick tour for you to the BMC on the ground floor. Um, so, um, um, Justice, Justice and Balfour, please, um, please come forward, please. Justice and Balfour would lead you to the BMC for you to go and have a look at the, at the BMC if you have not been there before. It's something we are very proud of here at the NCA. Now, we'll end today's um, event. So, uh, this is Balfour, this is Justice. They'll be in the foyer here after the ceremony. They'll lead you to the BMC on the ground floor, just in case you have not been there before. And I call on, on Anna Diffie Bedu to kindly come and give us the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Kwame. So on behalf of the board and management of the NCA, we would like to thank the Honorable Minister for Communications and Digitalization for coming to launch our DAB trials in Ghana. I'd also like to thank the Minister for Information, Honorable Kojo Ponkroma, for being here today. To our board members for taking time off your busy schedules, we are very grateful for you being here today. To the Deputy Minister, to Bernie from World DAB, to our special invited guests, our own management staff, and the media, of course, we can't do without you. would like to say a very, very big thanks to you for being here. We are sure that you'll carry the story out, and we do hope that the 18 stations involved in the trial will also make some noise about this so that other people will hear about the World DAB, especially the Ghana trials. So on this note, thank you very much. And as Kwame said, we have people to lead you to the BMC so that those of you who haven't seen our broadcast monitoring system can see the beautiful uh, project that we have there. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Um
I would like to have the uh, 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 CEOs and then the reps from the various agencies kindly join the Honorable Mr. Hefe a, a, a group picture. And they should be kindly be joined by the board members of the NCA board as well as MD for graphic. Please join us here for the group picture. Thank you. 